Today's Spotlight is brought to you in part by presenting sponsor, Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. Welcome to Spotlight. I'm your host, Jane Wynette, and today I'm joined by three local nonprofits, Community Access Naperville, or CAN for short, Western DuPage Special Recreation Association, and their WDSRA for short, and the Naperville JCs, or the JCs for short. You're watching Spotlight, and joining me now from Community Access Naperville, or CAN for short, are Jayma Wall and Simba Tukaru. So nice to have you both here. And Jayma, I'm going to start right off with you in the lovely green Community Access <laughs> Naperville t-shirt. Um, tell us a little bit about CAN and why it was started. Okay, well, CAN was started by six Naperville moms 12 years ago who were trying to create a program for their teenage sons that were about to age out of um, the school district. And the, the kids here in um, Illinois, the, the law is that after they turn 22, then you're on your own. And so we started um, putting our heads together thinking, what are, what, what are our boys going to do? They're not going to sit at home and watch TV all day. And so we um, decided to start out with a, uh, a one-week day camp. And we did that for two years as kind of a trial run to see how it would go. And after that, it, we decided we were on to something. So we just started out slow. We did um, every other Saturday, you know, so twice a month. And it was, uh, it's a vocational, recreational day program for individuals with um, intellectual or developmental disabilities, and particularly autism. Okay. Most of our participants are nonverbal. They have a lot of challenges, and uh, they, they need uh, extra support that some of the other programs um, don't have. Uh, our program was started pretty much the way uh, Little Friends, and Giant Steps and Turning Point and all those programs that are out there were all started by parents who wanted something else for their children. Yeah. So that was 12 years ago. So fast forward, we are now five days a week and twice a month that we offer programming. They're five hour programming. We've recently added a second program for, um, for participants who might need a little extra support. Um, we go out, in, it's kind of a, it's a, like I said, a vocational um, recreational program. So the first part of the day is, is a vocational skill. Uh, and then after that, like, we typically go out to a restaurant, have lunch, and then do something fun. So it's basically first work, then play. Nice. Kind of like life, right? Just like oh, life. Yeah. Just, <laughs> like, life. life. You Just like life. Then you get to play. So um, we are out in the community. Our participants wear these bright green. Uh, this is our signature uh, canned green shirts. Uh, so you, you know, may have seen uh, a group of, uh, of us you know, doing all kinds of activities, visiting restaurants, uh, the river walk, the library, uh, taking train trips. We, we've done, we do all kinds of things. Yeah. But you know, we found out our kids need what everybody else needs. They need you know, a purpose in life. They need socialization. They need something to do. And so that's what we created CAN for. That's awesome. And I think it's so true, right? And, and we talk about this a lot in the community, how we put so much time and attention, and importantly so, with children. And, and, and then we suddenly sort of forget that they still need help. They do. And, and so Most that's for the rest of their life. Yes. It's not like you age out of that need, right? right. No, they yeah. don't. <laughs> Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> Simba, talk a little bit. I, you know, James talked about how it got started and, and what's sort of involved. Talk a little bit about what makes it unique. Yeah, what makes CAN unique and what makes me excited about CAN is that we are fully immersive. And what I mean by that is that we are a community based program and we are out in the community every day. Um, we are out there, we go to our partners, we go to restaurants, and that is the focus. We want to make sure that we are integrated in our community fully. 
And that means that we participate in all the community activities that everyone else participates with. And the only difference is that our participants need some help, and that's what our staff is there to do, to help our participants fully be in the community. Yeah, and I think that's so lovely, right? Because, um, you know, then you, I, I would imagine, and you'll tell me if I'm wrong, that you, you find other people along the way as you're out there in the community that want to come alongside you. Yes. I mean, I think one of the greatest things that I've seen personally is when we've been out in the community and there's a mother and their son maybe has autism and is a little younger. And you can see them have, see like, yes, there's something for my child when they're older to do. Because I think in our community, we don't see adults that have intellectual developmental disabilities out there once they're a certain age. And for certain parents that have school age children, that could be worrisome, right? Absolutely. Like what happens to them after this? They don't just disappear. Right. I want them to be out here. And just like Gemma said, they started this program because they needed that. And they needed not just to be out there, but also be with peers. Yeah. So one interesting thing about what makes us unique as well is that we have college age and young adult staff members that are peers or more like friends with our participants. And that's something that no other program here in our community is able to provide to them. Yeah, and I like that, and I love how, you know, you just, with the bright green shirts too, it also draws attention to that. And mm -hmm. we need to all be, you know, it takes a village, right? And yeah. so we all need to be part of that. Talk a little bit about some of your partnerships. Yeah, we have tons of different types of partnerships, and I'm gonna give three examples. Um, we go to many restaurants around in the Naperville area. One particular one that I know that our participants enjoy is um, Q Barbecue downtown. Who does not like a good barbecue, <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, what's great about that particular par um, partnership is that we've been going there for quite some time. And also the staff member really love our CAN participants. Like I always tell people it's kind of like chairs where everyone knows your name. That's how our participants are. They come in there and the staff members at Q Barbecue are like, hey guys. And it's just a warm, loving environment to know that they're part of something, part of our community. Nice. Um, another one is a new partnership that we started with. Another nonprofit um, called Project Cure and they help get medical supplies in places that are that need them and right now our participants are helping them in our community service time um, to actually package up medical equipment to go to places like Ukraine that really need those type of medical um, supplies at this moment. Um, that kind of gets to Jameis' point of purpose, right? You know, absolutely. that's a wonderful example of that. Yeah. And then another one is um, maybe something that we do recreationally. Our people love to bowl. And <laughs> they are out there oh, yeah. that's bowling, a activity. going to the Martin Arboretum, um, just enjoying life as people should. Nice, nice. Those are three great examples. Um, Jamie, how, how can people get involved with you? How can they support the work that you're doing? Well, um, funny you should ask. We have a, a fundraiser coming up in October. Uh, we have not done an in-person fundraiser due to COVID for the past two years. So this year we're coming uh, back, uh, hopefully very strong. We're excited to have it uh, October 6th, Thursday night, October 6th at Seven Bridges Golf Club in Woodridge. So we're hoping for a, uh, a big turnout. Well, good, good. Well, listen, thank you both so much for stopping by to chat to us and give us some more information about CAN. And if you're interested in learning more about Community Access Naperville, please go and visit their website. We're gonna take a quick break, but stay tuned. We're coming right back with more Spotlight. Since Busey Bank first opened our doors in 1868, we have built upon a tradition of close relationships and broad financial capabilities. Our experienced team provides the highest level of personalized service to ensure we accomplish your goals, simplifying your wealth management and business lending needs, and ensuring a legacy for generations. Building business, growing wealth since 1868. Member FDIC. The Naperville Police Department needs your help to solve crime and bring offenders to justice. When you submit tips to Naperville Crime Stoppers, you help keep our city one of the safest in the nation. Tips to Naperville Crime Stoppers have helped solve hundreds of crimes and recover over $7 million in drugs, property, and cash. Remember, tipsters remain anonymous and receive cash rewards up to $1,000 if their tips lead to an arrest. Call the tip line at 630 420-6006. 
you may have that one piece of information that solves the crime. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Spotlight. I'm your host, Jane Wynette, and joining me now from the Western DuPage Special Recreation Association are Dan Leary and Tina Mazone. So nice to have you both on the show. Dan, I'm gonna start right out with you. What's WDSRA? WDSRA is a collaboration between nine park districts in DuPage County, nine wonderful communities. And what we do is we provide special rec services for people with disabilities. Really, from the youngest age through their entire lifetime, we create experiences and adapt events and programs and sports just to make them uh, achieve their highest goals. And we try to fulfill that throughout everything we do. That's wonderful. And I know it's exciting because you've just wrapped your first year as an executive director of this organization. So congratulations on that. Um, what are you looking to accomplish as you look to the future? Well, it's uh, thank you for asking me that. It, it's exciting to finish the first year, but now you start to steer the, uh, steer the organization where you want. We're really focused on three things right now. Access, how do we get more people into our programs? A lot of people need scholarship assistance or help with the funding, so what do we need to do there? Awareness, if they don't know about us, they can't use us. So partnering with our education and health partners to be the gatekeepers to say, hey, WDSRA is there to help you. And then really it's about activities. So anything that you or I might enjoy out there, stand up paddle boarding, uh, any sports activity, um, anything you can really think of, are we offering that in the marketplace for people with disabilities? Are we adapting it, making it fun, safe, and enjoyable for them to pursue their passions? Love that, and yeah. I love how focused, and, and, and three is a good number. It's, it's, <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, out there and achievable, right? Right. Well, the other thing that makes it all happen is staff, and I know we're going to talk to one of our staff members here, but we're so people-driven. So if you know anybody, I, I say to people out there right now, retired uh, education professionals, um, active adults, and then high schoolers and college kids, a lot of them come to us for their first job. So right now, if you want to make a difference in somebody's life, come to WD. Oh, I love that. Well, and we are. We're going to queue up Tina because <laughs> Tina's been with you for many, many years. Um, Tina, talk about what keeps bringing you back. Why? Why are you there? Totally. So I actually started working for WD, as Dan said, as a high school student, as a 16-year-old student who wanted a part-time job, and it was local. So I said, perfect. Um, and then, you know, now that 16 years out, I'm still working <laughs> for the organization. I have a full-time job. I still work for Webster as a part-time job, but really what keeps me there is, besides apart from the flexibility, you know, I get to pick what programs interest me in working. I get to pick what nights of the week, what weekends I want to work, um, which is great. But not only the flexibility in that, it's really just the friendships I've made with both the participants and the staff members. You know, I work with staff members for years now, and I've gotten to know new ones. I've built relationships with them, and it's fun to see, like, okay, what program did you get? Or are we in the same program? Are you doing this on Friday night? Perfect. Let's go. Um, but then also the participants. You know, you get to see participants really just, like, thrive in our programs. And as Dan mentioned, really just be a part of things that everybody else does, but really get to bring it, you know, adapt it and make it accessible for individuals with special needs. So it's really great to like build relationships with the participants and really see them um, being a part of programs that maybe they've never had an opportunity to go to Six Flags or to go paddle boarding or whatever it may be. So it's awesome to see. Yeah, and I, you know, 16 years, you've probably seen a lot of participants really grow with you, I would imagine. Yes, there is, there's so many participants that I've like known since they were youth like I coach them in youth basketball and then all of a sudden now I'm coaching them in adult basketball and I'm like, you know, you get to kind of see the whole progression of that. I have a group of fellas that I've really worked with for, I mean, the last 15 years, they were in my first group of programs and now they're like 15 years older and you kind of see like, okay, what interests them now, what, how they've changed. It's really great to see. I have some that are like, okay, wait, you live here, right? Yeah, like we're kind of local, we're close by. It's really great to see those relationships where you make them. Yeah, that's nice. And, and, and I love the fact, you know, you talk about flexibility. You've already totally. got another full-time job. So that must, you must really, really love it. I yes, mean, yes. I mean, I work full-time in the education world. Um, which a lot of staff members work into the education world. You know, you have summers off or weekends off, so it's great to be able to pick up programs maybe more in the summer or on weekends. Um, but then also it's nice because I still, you know, I still now have, I have a full-time job now, but it's great to be able to be flexible in my schedule and work programs that really interest me, that I'm 
really excited about and still be able to do that all while having a full-time job. That's awesome. That's awesome. You've got yeah. to be very excited to have some staff members like Tina on board. T <laughs> Tina and the staff make it all go. Yeah, I'm personally connected to, to WD as well. I have a 23-year-old who takes programs. He's been in, in Tina's programs and always has a great time. That's so I awesome. get to see it firsthand. That's awesome. Well, now, and let's talk a little bit about that, because Tina's got some, some skills in her regular day job that really help in that. But does every member of staff need to have that, Dan? There's a certain level that w we like staff to be proficient in behavior management and some of the things they might see with our population. But we have a great support services team that walks them through everything they need to know to make sure that it's a safe environment for them as well as the participants. I mean, we're very inclusive. Uh, so we're really prepared for anything. And people like Tina are just such a great resource for new people that are coming on board. Um, I wouldn't let anything sway anyone from trying to work with WD. Okay, yep. so, and, and in terms of that, you know, if they got uh, some information, they reach out, kind of talk me a little bit through how they reach out or apply or what that kind of looks like. Sure, either through the website or our front office team, they'll guide them to support services and they'll get an idea for what their interests are. You know, do they want to work special events? Do they want to work one-on-one -on -one in a camp setting? And so we'll try to tailor the opportunities to their schedule as well as their availability and their hours. And really from there, it's just a conversation and then it's training and onboarding and then we get them up and working. Up and working. And how's that training go? So give us, you know, because you talked about your, your son's uh, experienced it. How, how did you find the training? Well, and the training is awesome, and I really think that Webster stresses so much on trying, you know, there's, it, it, the great thing about Webster is you can be working a program with a staff member that maybe doesn't have much experience with individuals with special needs, but is awesome at basketball. And then okay. all of a sudden you put someone who knows basketball and how to coach basketball, and then you pair them up with maybe someone who has a lot of experience working with individuals with special needs, and it's a perfect match. So I really think a lot of the training that we go through as part-time staff and as staff members is really working on like understanding what are disabilities. Because there are a lot of people that aren't familiar with it and um, you know, just learning about what is, what is maybe, what is some behaviors, what does that look like for someone that has special needs. So we get training on that, but then also how to, you know, how to work through some behaviors, how to support an individual with communication, with independence, all of that in a recreation setting. Okay, well that's nice, and that's like a buddy system right totally, there, right? Yeah. So different layers of buddy systems all the way along. Mm -hmm. yep. Dan, as you go into that next year, tell me one thing that you really, really are excited about. One thing that I'm excited about, it's tough. We're always looking at new programs. Uh, one that we're looking at in Naperville right now, we're looking at improv theater. So just like improv, you might have heard Second City Theater, things like that. We want to adapt that experience for our population. And we've just seen that it has great benefits with regards to communication mm -hmm. and connecting and those interpersonal skills that are so crucial for development. You know, our education partners do a great job, but at age 22, our people age out of the schools. Yeah. So they need to continue to develop their skills and uh, that's a lot of what we're about. We, we love the world of Wedzra and we'll tell anybody about it. I love that. I love that. Well, with both of you and so much enthusiasm, it can only go in a positive direction. <laughs> so go. thank you so much for stopping by. And to find out more about Westra, uh, Weston DuPage Special Recreation Association for Long, uh, please go and visit their website. We're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We're coming right back with more Spotlight. Since Busey Bank first opened our doors in 1868, we have built upon a tradition of close relationships and broad financial capabilities. Our experienced team provides the highest level of personalized service to ensure we accomplish your goals, simplifying your wealth management and business lending needs, and ensuring a legacy for generations. Building business, growing wealth since 1868. Member FDIC. We all have a story to share, stories others can relate to, whether moments of sorrow or of hope and inspiration, whether a story of struggle or a moment of victory. Every little moment captured and shared helps us to feel more informed, helps us to feel more engaged with and connected to the community we all call home. Every little moment captured and shared adds up to something greater for us that something is the collective story of Naperville, a city rich in its volunteer spirit, its diversity, its traditions and celebrations, and so much more. In Naperville, 
There are so many stories worth sharing, and for the past 35 years, it's been our honor to tell those stories and share them with you. Welcome back to Spotlight. And joining me now from the Naperville JCs to talk about the organization and the last fling are, oh, 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 wait, is that Frankie Flynn? Is that you? Wow, hi. Okay, fancy meeting you here. Where are your friends? I was really looking forward to catching up with them since last year. <laughs> you must have heard that they're coming back to talk about the fling. I know, I'm so funny, right? Um, hey, could you do me a favor? Could you go and get Chad and Beth for me? Thank you. Okay, so that was nice to see Frankie, but now joining me from the Naperville JCs are Chad Pettigo and Beth Gita. So I'm so glad to see both of you here, as much as I love your very large doggy friend. Um, Beth, I'm going to start out with you. We're rapidly approaching a super end of summer bash with the Naperville JCs last fling. What's new and exciting? Well, this year we are very excited to bring back the same scaled down small community event that we brought back last year. Everyone seemed to love it last year and I know they're going to love it this year. Uh, we have great local bands that are coming to grace our entertainment stage and leading our parade this year we have three wonderful Special Olympic athletes who are Grand Marshals. They won a gold medal down in Florida for the USA's uh, Special Olympics Games. We have the food, the carnival, we have, every, we have something for everyone. So we're so excited to see everyone back this year. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love your grand marshals. That's gonna be so <laughs> fun. We so, always love doing the parade, uh, yeah. Um, Chad, what, you've been doing this for many, many years. What's your favorite part of the fling? It's so hard to pick a favorite. Quite frankly, there's many wonderful parts to it, but if I had to choose, uh, when you look out and you see an audience full of community members who have a chance to come and just be community members, be neighbors, have fun, listen to music, let the kids ride the rides, enjoy food and drink in our beautiful downtown scenery of Naperville, that's the best part. Okay, I think that's true. And you guys have a bird's eye view from the stage. That's really a nice look out, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Beth, talk a little bit about, I mean, the Naperville JCs have been doing this for many, many years, but what's the best part about being a Naperville JC? Well, being a Naperville JC, I've been one my entire life. So even participating as like a, just a helper to my parents when they were running events as a teen volunteer and as a full-fledged member, I have always learned like something new every year, skills that I can bring to my professional and personal life. I've created many relationships that have lasted long, that has lasted for a very life, it'll, it'll be for a lifetime. And so, um, who wouldn't love that? So, it's been a great. And best not kidding, she's a multi-generational member. Her parents were JCs when she was born, uh, whereas I'm a transplant. So, even if you're not a Naperville native, but you're looking to give back to your community and learn more and be a part of something really great, our organization's open to everyone. Yeah, I like that, you know, and it really is a young person's organization too, right? Which, you know, that's nice to have. That's mm -hmm. very nice to have. Um, Ted, talk a little bit because one of the things, it's a wonderful bash that you put on at the end of the year or the end of the summer, I should yeah. say. Um, but it's a party with a purpose. It, it supports other organizations. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, one of our core values as Naperville JCs is that uh, service to humanity is the best work of life. And so not only do we throw a great party over Labor Day weekend, but we take the proceeds from that event and put it towards helping to donate to other nonprofits across the community, including the one we're sitting in right now. Yes. Uh, so our focus every year is to give back and have an impact. Sometimes that's through financial contributions, other times it's through our volunteerism. Uh, just next week, we're gonna be down at the DuPage River uh, where our mile long of the river stretch that we've adopted is gonna get cleaned up by fellow JCs who will be floating along and picking up trash and cleaning up items. A few weeks later, we'll be gearing up for the last fling and hosting it all Labor Day weekend. It is not a for-profit festival. Uh, we back it financially every year, and our goal is to raise as much money as we can so we can give back as much money as we can to the community. And that's why it's so important to come out and support us. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I think to that whole idea of people are having fun, you're bringing them together, you're giving a great place to gather, right? But they're gathering, and when they do, they're giving back to their community, even 100%. if they don't realize that. Um, talk a little bit, Beth, about what you like most about being a JC. Uh, what I like most about being a JC, um, 
I just love to give back from the community. Like we've said previously, I've been doing this in some fashion for my whole life, and I couldn't imagine a life that you can't volunteer, you can't try to make your community better. And I, it, it's just an amazing part of my life, and I wouldn't be where I am today without the JCs in my life. Yeah. And when well, the JCs were founded uh, in 1920, the intent was to allow for young persons to have leadership opportunities. So we have all sorts of committees and volunteer projects and programs that anyone can walk in, experienced or not experienced, and take part in that and become a leader and try new things and be mentored by those who've done it before them. Uh, but the misnomer is once you reach age 40, you can't be a JC anymore, and that's absolutely not true. Uh, we have many neighbors who were JCs who blazed the path for us who are still involved as, uh, we affectionately call them roosters, but really as <laughs> alumni members uh, that are still involved to this day and still a big part of how we accomplish what we do every year. So any one of all ages can come and join us. Uh, if you're under the age of 18, come with a parent and be a volunteer Labor Day weekend. We'd love to have you involved. Okay, and talk a little bit about that because I know volunteering, it takes a lot of hands to make the last fling work. So talk about the importance of being a JC volunteer for the last fling specifically. We recruit hundreds of volunteers in order to pull off what we do. And whether it's our larger footprint or our smaller footprint, we still need volunteers to make it work, whether it be operating the gates, helping with the music, the food, the beverage, the setup, the takedown, the family fun area. There's so many ways to engage. And so we have a sign-up genius where anyone can sign up for shifts right now and then come in and be trained. Say if they're helping with the beverage service, they would receive a Bassett training and then be able to work one of our beer trailers or one of our wine stations. And then have the opportunity, if they're involved with a non-for-profit or if they want to designate a non-for-profit, for their sweat equity hours to turn into a financial contribution to that 501c3. So if you're involved, let's say, with the Knights of Columbus, who I just saw last night, they signed up for an entire shift, 14 uh, people who will be pouring beverages all night over Labor Day weekend, they'll get a financial contribution back to their organization as well. Just one of the many ways that we give back, but also welcome in volunteers. And that's really nice, and I think one of the things we've done that before is you have a lot of flexibility in that. So, I mean, it might be that it's 14 people for a whole shift, right? But, you know, you can pick a little piece. If you only have a few hours, you can still participate, right? Yeah, you can choose which day and which time slot is best for you. You can come volunteer for a few hours, but then stick around and party all night long with us if you'd like. And the great part is we have many volunteers who've been doing it for decades who collect the t-shirts every year and have all the different colors of t-shirts and styles that we provide for our volunteers every year during the last fling. Sounds like a quilt opportunity to me, I'm thinking. Um, as we close out, talk a little bit about how you become a JC, kind of what that process looks like. So we actually have our meetings the second Tuesday of every month, and that's held at the VFW here in Naperville. Uh, you basically show up for two meetings, and on that second meeting, if you want to come join us, we'll swear you in. At our meetings, you learn all about the fun activities that we do that Chad has mentioned earlier. And then you start your process. You pay your dues, and you'll come on in, and we're happy to have all the help, and we enjoy everyone that comes into our door. There's no peer pressure. So when you come to your first meeting, <laughs> it's, it's just a way to get to know us. And then if you really liked what you heard or you want to learn more, you can come back at the second meeting. And if you choose at that point in time, we'd love to swear in new members. And really, we need it. Post-pandemic, everyone's been so isolated. It's a chance to come back together and really have a positive impact. Not to mention, sometimes you can get some pretty cool swag. So <laughs> as you can see, our members actually have license plates for this year's Last Fling. So if you see anyone with one of these orange Last Fling plates, give them a honk, give them a wave, thank them for the countless hours of volunteerism that they've invested so we can have a really awesome Labor Day weekend and everyone can enjoy the last fling. Love it. Love it. Well, we always know we look forward to it. We so enjoy bringing the parade live on Channel 17 and NCTV17.com. But most importantly, we love the, the work that you're doing. So we wish you the best of luck for this coming weekend. Thank you for all the good work that you're doing in the community. And if you would like more information about the Naperville JCs and specifically the last fling, please go and visit their website. I'd like to thank all of my guests for joining us on Spotlight and our friends at Busey Bank for their generous sponsorship of today's show. To learn more about the organizations featured on this episode, please go and visit our website at nctv17.com. And to stay informed about what's happening in our community, sign up to receive our daily news update and like and follow us on Facebook. For Spotlight, I'm Jane Wernett. Thank you for watching. Today's Spotlight is brought to you in part by presenting sponsor, Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise.